So if you're a complete Pygame beginner, this small tutorial is going to show you how to set up this screen with Pygame. So by the end of this video, you're going to learn how to make this kind of screen with Pygame and how to set up the screen and how to make a clock to regulate the FPS and also how to put these two images on the screen along with this text. So the timestamps are on the video player and the first thing we're going to do is install Pygame. Then we're going to create the background image and the screen and then we're going to put the text and the Pygame image on the screen as well. Thank you to this person for giving me the idea for this video. I want to keep doing this kind of thing where I take your ideas and then put them into my videos. So if you have any more ideas, make sure to leave them in the comments and I'll try to get around to making a video on them. With that, let's learn Pi Game Setup. So for this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you have Python installed. If you don't have it installed, then you can check out my first video on this channel, actually, which is in the top right right now. Keep in mind, it's pretty low quality, though and it shows you how to install Python. So assuming you have Python installed with the pip package manager, installing Pygame is super simple. Just go to your terminal and say pip install Pygame. And this is going to install Pygame for you. So for me, it's going to say requirement already satisfied because I've already installed Pygame. But for you, if you haven't installed it, then it should just install normally. All right, now that we have Pygame installed, we can go to our script and start writing some code. Now the first thing we're going to do here is import all of our modules that we need. And for this script, we're only going to need two of them. They're going to be Pygame and Sys. Pygame is pretty self-explanatory, but Sys is going to allow us to cleanly exit the program so that when we exit it, we don't get any errors. So the first line of Pygame code that you're going to write is going to be Pygame.init, which is going to initialize the module. Then we can create our screen. And our screen is a surface in Pygame. You can think of a surface as a black canvas that you can put other things on top of. So let's go ahead and create the screen and then I'll explain it later on when we run the code. So let's say screen in all capitals because it's going to be a constant is equal to Pygame dot display dot set underscore mode. This is the function that allows us to create our screen and set the width and height of it. For now, let's say 800 by 800. And we're actually going to put these two values into two constant variables called width and height. So let's go ahead and copy them. And we can put them in two variables here. So width comma height is equal to 800 and 800 respectively. So if we go ahead and run our code right now, as you saw, we had our screen, which is just a black screen for a split second there, but it works to make our screen actually run. We're going to create a game loop and we're going to do that later. For now, let's set a caption to our screen. So let's say pygame.display.set underscore caption. Here we can pass in the text we want for our caption. This can be whatever you want, but let's say something like complete guide to Pygame setup. Okay, so now our screen has a caption. If you run our code and if you look really fast, you're going to see complete guide to Pygame setup. And it was there for a split second. All right, moving on here, we can create our icon. So our icon is going to be in the top left. As you can see right here, we have the Python icon. We're going to say icon is equal to pygame.image.load. So here we're creating another surface, just like the screen surface, except we're going to load an image with pygame.image.load. So once again, a surface is like a black canvas that you can put other things on top of, but a surface can also be a kind of image like this. So with pygame.image.load, we're taking in an image and we're converting that to a pygame surface. So in the parameters here, we need to pass in the path of the image. And that is going to be assets slash icon.png for me. If we go ahead and open up the file explorer, you can see that I have my assets right here. So I have three assets in my assets folder, which are the background image, the Python icon and the pygame logo. And we're going to put these three images on the screen. So back in our code, we have our icon surface and we can use pygame dot display dot set icon to actually set it as our display icon. And we're going to have to pass in icon, which is the surface. All right, next, we're going to actually create our main game loop. So let's go down here and let's say while true. So this is an infinite while loop that's going to keep running until we tell it to stop running, which is exactly what we want for our game. So the first thing in our game loop here is going to allow our game to actually run instead of disappearing immediately. So we're going to say for event in pygame.event.get 
we're going to say if event dot type equals pygame dot quit then pygame dot quit which is a function and sys dot exit okay what do we just do so we cycle through every event that pygame has an event can be something like a mouse button down or a key press or if we press the x button on the screen which we're referencing here with pygame dot quit so pygame dot event dot get returns all of the possible events in pygame and we're cycling through each of those possible events and we're checking if that event is equal to pygame.quit so if we've pressed the x button if it is then we call pygame.quit which exits pygame and sys.exit which completely exits the program so that we get no errors so if we go ahead and save our code and run it now we have our black screen although there's nothing here at least there is something and we can close our screen and we're not going to get any errors down here all right cool now we can put our background on the screen so to do this, we're going to do the exact same thing we did for our icon, but we're going to pass in our background image. So right below here, let's say background is equal to pygame.image.load assets slash background.png. And obviously you could pass in your own image here as well. Okay, so here we have our background surface. And to actually put it on the screen, we can use a method of the surface called blit. So blit allows us to put another surface on top of our surface. So the surface we want to put the background on is the screen right here. So in our main game loop, we're going to say screen dot blit. And we're going to put our background on the screen. And the position is going to be zero zero. So for this second parameter here, we're passing in the position, but you could also pass in a rect for the position. I'll get into what a rect is in a bit. So if we run our code, you'd be expecting to see our background on the screen. But if we run our code, that's not going to happen. As you can see, it's still black. And the reason for this is that we haven't updated the display. So back in our code here, we can say one line to update the display, which is pygame.display.update. Now, if we run our code again, we have our background on the screen. Nice. Also, if you notice, we have our caption in the top left, along with our icon. So we're getting somewhere here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our clock to regulate the FPS of the game. Then we're going to put our text and our Pi game image on the screen. So let's create our clock now. Up here, let's say clock is equal to Pi game dot time dot clock. So a clock in Pi game allows you to do a bunch of things. You can actually look at the documentation for more information about that. I'll leave a link to the archive documentation since the current documentation isn't working right now because of a certain situation involving a man named Poutine. But you can still access the archive docs and look at all of the methods for a clock object in Pi game. So the only method we're going to use here is clock.tick, which just regulates the FPS of the game. So clock.tick. And let's say we want the FPS to be 60. So let's pass in 60. Now, if we run our code, you're not going to notice any difference because we don't have any moving parts. But if we had any moving sprites, then you would notice a difference. All right, now we can create our text. And to create our text, we actually need to create a font object in Pygame. So Pygame allows you to load in your own fonts or use a default font and then render some text with it. So let's go ahead and create our font. So down here, let's say font is equal to pygame.font.sysfont. And I'll scroll down a bit here. So pygame.font.sysfont allows us to create a font object and we need to pass in the name of the font that we want to use for our font object. So sysfont only allows us to choose from the default fonts that Pygame has. If you're wondering what they are, we can actually go ahead and print them. So firstly, let's comment this and print all of the fonts that Pygame has by default. We can do this with pygame.font.get underscore fonts. Let's run our code. And here we have all of the fonts that Pygame has. So this huge list of all of the fonts. I actually already chose the font though, so we can close our code here and we can pass in Sego UI black. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's basically this font here. We're also going to make the font size 64, although this is also customizable. Okay, now that we have our font, we can actually render it. So we can say text is equal to font dot render. So this is a text object now, which is actually also a surface in Pygame. And with font.render, we're going to have to pass in the text we want to show on the screen. Let's say something like hello, Pygame, instead of, you know, hello world. 
Let's pass in anti-aliasing, which is going to be true. You don't have to really worry about that. And the color is going to be white. So for colors in Pygame, you can pass in the default like string name white, or you can also pass in an RGB value or a hex value as well, whatever you want. Now we're going to create a rect for our text. A rect is like a rectangle that goes around a surface and a rect tells you a bunch of information about the surface. So for example, we can use a rect to detect collisions, but in our script, all we're going to do is we're going to use our rect to control the position of our surface. So to create a rect, let's go down here and let's say text underscore rect is equal to text dot get rect. And here we're going to pass in the position we want the rect to be at. Let's say we want the rect to be at width divided by two and 150 on the y axis. So these are the x and y values. 150 from the y axis means that it will be 150 from the top of the screen. And we want the center of our text to be at this position. So we can pass in center equals that. All right, now we have our text and our text rect. And down here, we can actually put it on the screen. So after screen.blit background, we're going to say screen.blit text. And the position, like I said, can be a rect. So we're going to pass in text rect. Let's go ahead and run our code again. And now we have text here that says Hello Pi Game in the Sego UI black font. Nice. The last thing to do is put in the Pi Game logo. So let's go ahead and repeat the same steps for rendering an image with the Pi Game logo. So here back in our code, we're going to say Pi Game underscore image equals Pi Game dot image dot load. So the same thing that we did up here. We're going to say pygame.image.load and the path is going to be once again assets, but this time it's going to be assets slash pygame.png. We're also going to create a rect for this. So we're going to say pygame image rect is equal to pygame image.get rect and the center is going to be the width of the screen divided by two and then 300 on the y axis. So 300 from the top of the screen. Okay, we can repeat the same process here. Down here, we can put it on the screen by saying screen dot blit pygame image at the position pygame image rect. Let's go ahead and run our code again. And here we have the pygame image on our screen, but it's super big right now. So what if we wanted to scale it down? This can actually be done with a function in pygame super simply. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so instead of just saying pygame.image.load assets slash pygame.png, we're going to say pygame.transform.scale, and then we're going to pass that in. And then we're going to have to pass a second parameter, which is going to be the size of the scaled image we want. So I already played around with this, and I found that 300 by 119 was a good size. Although since Pygame does not have a good PNG of their logo, for some reason, it's going to look super pixelated. But anyways, if we run our code, now we have Pygame at a more reasonable size in the center of our screen. So yeah, that's basically the end of the tutorial. Now you have a fully working, you know, Pygame setup. And now you should know the very basics of Pygame. If you want to know where to go next, you can check out my other Pygame tutorials where I show you how to create UI and games in Pygame. If you found it helpful, consider liking. If you really liked it, then subscribe to the channel to see more. As you see, this percentage of people are subscribed to my channel. I don't really care. But until the next video, have a good day.